Come all your friends and comrades, the story I will tell. Tis all about a family on French and they did dwell. It was Tom and Don and Joseph and John and Julie, 23. And a cockeyed bull, a dicky bird made up the family. It was the middle of November or somewhere there's about. The family boarded up their home and traveled to the south. Says Tommy, cost me 50 cents, it's passage for to pay. Now who will take my dicky bird while I am gone away? Well, Tommy met Tom Hurley, and this to him did say, You'll take my hand and dicky bird while I am gone away. Oh, Tom, you got a clever dick, likewise a handsome hen. Oh, yes, I'll take your dicky bird till you return again. Well, Tommy ran in the house to break the news to him. I got Tom Tobin's dicky bird till he returns again. If I should go up north, west point, or down the southern shore, this rooster will be company till I get back again. Well, then she clapped her tiny hands and shouted out with joy. Oh, Tom, you think so much of me, a great big handsome boy. Go get your hammer and your saw and build for him the crib. I long to see that rooster, I know he must be big. Well, Tom, he brought the rooster and laid him on the floor. Well, Lem declared she never saw the likes of him before. She said she never saw the like, or had she ever heard of a rooster any bigger than Tom Tobin's dicky bird. Well, Lem, she loved that rooster, she loved it so to stand. She used to pat his bony head and take him in her hand. That rooster, he enjoyed the sport, but pleasure he did share with the wife of Thomas Hurley when Tom Hurley wasn't there. Well, Tommy went to him and said, I cannot understand how you could love a rooster of any married man. Oh, Tom, I love that rooster, I know I despair you. You know your rooster number one, there's rooster number two. Well, the rooster, he got saucy, as you may understand, and had to be beheaded by a jealous-minded man. We all sat around the table, our dishes and our spoons. We filled our bellies to the brim with saucy rooster stew.